this study fundamentally looks at the role of glia in brain function, but even more broadly in human evolution. Uh, we've been looking for some years at the differences between lower species and humans in glial morphology, glial architecture, glial physiology, glial physiology, specifically as it pertains to neuronal communication. The traditional role of glial cells is to make the environment perfect for synaptic transmission. So what we have noted uh, during several uh, more evolutionary studies is that glia cells expand both in complexity and size and diversity as brain function become more and more complex. So for example, the human astrocyte, and astrocyte are the most numerous of glia cells, is 24 larger than astrocyte in the rodent brain, and they have tenfold more processes, so they're very much increased in complexity. So that question, Ella basically raises the question, have glia cells expanded in their function and their roles, and maybe they're more implicated in higher cognitive network function in human than they are in rodents? So if we essentially replace the mouse glial component with their human counterpart, what does that do or what would it do to essentially neural processing and information flow within the mouse brain? And so that was the, the fundamental point of the experiment. And it was a way to, to really investigate what are the role, very fundamentally, uh, the roles of human glia in human evolution. The operational design was actually very straightforward. We chimerized, as we call this process, of injecting uh, baby mice with human glial progenitors. And these are glial progenitors that are derived from tissue, sorted, purified, and then injected into neonatal mice. And basically, we're out competing that uh, mouse population with the human glial progenitor pool. As the mice grow up, the human progenitors take over. They expand differentially relative to the mouse pool. They outcompete the mouse pool. And you end up with, as the mouse matures, uh, with a mouse brain where all the glial progenitors, literally all of the glial progenitors, become human. It's actually been extraordinary to us just how different these animals are. Uh, so first of all, anatomically, the human astrocytes uh, retain essentially cell autonomous differentiation so that in the mouse context these cells actually grow to the size of normal human astrocytes. The progenitor populations, the progenitors look like human glial progenitors. So we looked at a number of different indices of the function of these human glia in, in the mouse brain. We looked at the rate of spread of a, a intracellular calcium wave um, we found that that was the same in the human cells in the mouse environment as in a normal human cortical tissue. So what we first tested in these humanized chimeric mice is what everyone in the neuroscience field would think of as our model for learning, and that is long-term potentiation. And that is basically that we prepare a brain slice from the humanized chimeric mice, we stimulate them, and if we stimulate them very strong but for a short time, we would see a potentiation of the electrical responses in the slice. So we did that, and we found that uh, the humanized chimeric mice exhibited much stronger long-term potentiation than the mice that was raised in parallel, but didn't have implantation of human cells. And that told us that th these chimeras uh, really had significantly different neurophysiology than normal mice. And on that basis, since LTP we look at as essentially uh, a surrogate for learning in a neural system, we then went to actual behavioral assessments. We first looked at fear conditioning, then we looked at a variety of other behavioral tests. And the bottom line is that the animals that were chimerized with the human cells uh, had much more rapid learning, learning in terms of the electrophysiologic surrogate, long-term potentiation, learning in actual point of fact in, in the behavioral testing. And so here we were essentially um, changing, if you will, the, uh, the functional capabilities of, of these mice by virtue of the human glial chimerization, telling us that, that human glia have a, a species-specific role in species-specific intellectual capability and cognitive processing capability that, um, uh, that previously we suspected, but this is our first proof of the point.